What's up, folks? Jeffrey here in the hotel room. Want to hit you with a couple of takeaways from the blue-white scrimmage, as well as a couple of bold predictions that I got for you. Just a bunch of nuggets out here from Cowboy Camp. Got the media party tonight. I'm going to have to try to keep a sharp eye on Sean and RJ. They've been known to get out of control, so I'm going to be the guy that's there as security. Make sure everything, everything's everything. Stays legit. First thing from the blue-white scrimmage is something that I think we learned after seven games last year. If this team doesn't have Amari Cooper, they're in trouble. Wide receivers did not have a great day. Michael Gallup was solid. He made some. He made some of his catches. He did what he does. He was. He was all right. He was. He was solid out there. But outside of that, you didn't get a lot from the wide receiver position. And the most disappointing part about that is a couple of young guys had an opportunity and they failed to seize it. My guy John Bay Johnson, the undrafted receiver out of Toledo, he was. Let's see. They started off with the first team when they went seven on seven. Obviously, they went with Amari Cooper was out with the heel. So it was Gallup, Tavon Austin, Randall Cobb. But when the first team was still out there and they brought in the first sub, it was John Vay Johnson. So he's running as the fourth wide receiver, which means you add Amari Cooper in. He's the fifth wide receiver to this coaching staff right now. And he had some opportunities to make some really big plays. Uh, not necessarily in the blue-white scrimmage itself, but the practice part leading up to it. I just call all of it the scrimmage, whatever. Uh, but he had an opportunity to make a couple of big plays down the field, and that's what he's here for. And he dropped them, just flat-out dropped. And, you know, that was that's a big opportunity for him. Now, the first week of training camp, or week and a half, does not define training camp for anybody. But for a guy who could do no wrong for that first week, I thought that was a big missed opportunity. When Amari Cooper's not out there, you have an opportunity to run a lot with the first team and to drop a couple of those big plays that you'd been consistently providing throughout camp. Not good. Reggie Davis, same thing. He's bounced around with a few teams, and Cowboys brought him in as one of those guys because he can run, maybe return punts, stuff like that. They hit him on a play down the field, probably about a 20-yard gain coming across the field, double caught it, and then ends up fumbling. You know, these are guys that are scrapping to try to be a fifth or sixth wide receiver. And now when you look at that depth chart, it's a little bit scary when you get past the first four. Um, this receiver core needs somebody to step up. It needs somebody to come earn a spot on that team. It needs somebody who you're not afraid to put on the field as a fourth, fifth, sixth option. And right now, there's guys that have proven it throughout practices, but when the lights kind of came on and you had the most fans out there that they've had all camp, those were missed opportunities by those guys. Nobody really jumped out. And that's a little bit alarming for the receiver group. Uh, bold prediction, number one of the day, because there is one guy that's looked great every day. Malik Collins hasn't had an off day. He's been good every single day. Uh, Malik Collins... I will say he's going to have the second most sacks on the team. Tank Lawrence will be number one. I'll take Malik Collins to be number two. All it's got to be is health with him. I talked with Rod Marinelli. Sean and RJ talked with him too. Uh, and he's had nothing but praise for Malik Collins for his whole career. Like this, He said this isn't new, and I do think this is the best version of him. I think this is the strongest, most explosive version that we've seen of Malik Collins on a play-in, play-out basis. But he said this is just Malik Collins. It's who he is. It's just his foot, his feet. He's been hurt. But Malik Collins out here, he is absolutely balling. When uh, Xavier Suofilo's filling in for Zach Martin, he beat him pretty bad a couple of times. Uh, Malik Collins is having an incredible camp. I think he's going to have, give me the over-under at seven and a half, eight, somewhere around there for sacks from the interior from Malik Collins in a contract year. I think he's going to do that. The other thing that I think is a big note, I've talked a lot about the depth of this roster and I thought it was true coming into camp, but it's amazing how your perspective changes when you have to prove it. The offensive line, it's really good depth. You have your starting five, and outside of your starting five, you've got your third-round pick in Connor McGovern. you got Cam Fleming as a swing tackle. Then you've got Looney and Suofilo. But we're still waiting on Connor McGovern to come back from that pack and actually get out there and practice and get ready to play football. So without him available and get losing out on – really important snaps that would hopefully get you ready for a season to be a primary backup. Suofilo was in, and I tell you what, if Xavier Suofilo is a starting guard on this team, I'm worried. I think this team is going to bank on great protection and opening holes in the run game. This team is its built around that offensive line. We can talk about the quarterback. He needs that line. You can talk about the running back. He needs that line. 
And that they're going to have a weak link, I think, if Suofilo has to play. So I'd love to see McGovern get back out there. I hope the Zach Martin thing doesn't turn out to be a big deal. But for the moment, the idea of depth is a lot of fun until you got to go prove it. And as soon as they had to go prove it, I'm like, oh, dear, this is not good. Wide receiver, shortage. Offensive line, shortage. So those are my main notes. Let me check and see if there was anything else I wanted to hit you guys real quick. Oh, yeah, one thing. I think Antoine Woods has had a really nice camp. By the way, when I set that Malik Collins number, seven and a half or so sacks, Xavier Woods at least five interceptions. You can go ahead and lock that in. You can go ahead and lock that in. Coverage was outstanding. Coverage was outstanding yesterday. Seven on seven, you had quarterbacks taking six, seven seconds to throw the ball, and Kayvon Frazier came to the sideline where I was sitting, and he's telling people, why are they pretending that nobody's going to be chasing them? Like nothing was coming out on time because it was so well covered, and the quarterbacks were acting like they had time to roll out or just stand there, uh, and the defense was looking really good in coverage. Antoine Woods has had a nice camp. He looks good. Both the Covingtons jumped out a little bit. Uh, linebacker and defensive tackle, both of them, Christian and Chris, right? Yeah. Uh, and diddly-loo, diddly-loo. was there anything else I wanted to go over today? I thought I had one more thing. Oh, offensive creativity. The good news is yesterday and every single day in camp, there's been at least one play and usually more than one where the offense pops a big play, not because of a great individual play by a skill position player, but because of Kellen Moore. Just because of they're doing the pre-snap, they'll shift, they'll motion, they'll misdirection, they'll do all these different things, and then suddenly Jordan Chun is unaccounted for and is rumbling down the field for 50 yards. Or Darius Jackson, nobody picked him up. Or Darius Jackson on a wheel route, Tony Pollard. Like, you get somebody forgotten about because they are attempting to (gasps) trick people. It's crazy, right? But that's what they're doing. So we are seeing that out there. So that's a little blue-white recap. A couple of bold predictions for you. Uh, depth. Whew. Maybe, maybe not, this team with the depth that I think or thought that they had. Keep an eye on this wide receiver battle. Somebody's got to go win it. Love you guys. Make sure you're subscribing. Hit me in the comments with anything that you would like to hear about tomorrow. We will have a practice tomorrow. we got the media party tonight. And uh, lock it in, 105.3 The Fan. We'll see you tomorrow morning. And, of course, check 105.3thefan.com. You'll also get these videos there. Peace.